Hello everyone, welcome to Medic School Nerds. So I hope you are all doing good. I'm kind of nervous guys since it's my first video, but I can tell you that this channel will help you to understand the most complex topics into the simplified version. We'll also provide the videos on emerging diseases and its symptoms and how to prevent and how to manage such diseases. Our videos will help medical students to understand and you can apply this knowledge in any exams in your uni university exams and also like USMLE, PLAB, FMGE, NEXT and PG exams. So let's get into our discussion today. So before starting our video, I'm going to present a small case study. So let's diagnose this patient. A patient came into the primary healthcare clinic of nine months old boy who presented with the high grade fever for four days and his initial physical examination was normal. His lab findings shown abnormal white cells in his urine and CBC shows increased white blood cells. And he was diagnosed with the urinary tract infection and received an antibiotic for one day. After that, he developed a maculopopular rash over his body an adverse drug reaction was considered and uh, then the patient was referred to our hospital on the admission he still persisted the fever and was irritable vomiting cough and disquamation over the feet and hands he was diagnosed with the sepsis and given the another broad spectrum antibiotics for two days however this patient fever is still persisted an additional thorough physical examination showed redness of his bcg inoculation scar so what is your diagnosis so I want you guys to pause the video and take time and also take note of the symptoms how presented and and also the how the disease is progressed. So we will conclude this case at the end of our discussion. So let's get into our discussion. So today's topic is Kawasaki disease. So Kawasaki disease is a systemic vasculitis disease. So when we are talking about the vasculitis, it is a particularly inflammation of your blood vessels. It could be venous or arterial. So in the arterial, we have seen here the large arteries and the medium arteries and also the small arteries. So usually this affects the medium sized arteries such as coronary arteries most commonly. And also there is also other studies showed that it can also affect like axillary arteries, brachial arteries, subclavian and also the femoral and the popliteal arteries. In this picture, you can see Dr. Tomisago Kawasaki, a pediatrician from the Japan who pinpointed this mysterious disease. Previously, it is known as mucocutaneous lymphoid syndrome. So most commonly, this disease is mostly affected in the boys comparing to the girls and it is affected in the less than 5 years old children but also it can affect in the rarely like 8 to 12 child children. So most commonly, it is highest incidence is shown in the Asian population including the Japan and Pacific Islander. So Kawasaki disease etiology is still unknown and idiopathic. So when we are talking about the epidemiological studies, some of them are supports the infectious origin in less than 5 years old children. But furthermore studies is failed to prove any single agent guilty for this kind of presentation. But some other studies also proved that there is a linkage of a genetic role in the linkage and also the genome based studies. Identified the polymorphisms in the some specific genes like ITPKC gene which is a T-cell regulator in the pathogenesis we will discuss about this T-cell regulator and also it showed the high susceptibility of the Kawasaki disease and also there is other genes like C CASP3 and BLK and HLA like human leukocyte antigen which is also important in the T-cell regulation and these also involved in so let's see what's really happening in these patients some of the maternal factors during the childbirth like vaginal infections or any other infections in the mother or the postnatal factors breastfeeding or the environmental toxins like heavy metals and also genetic inheritance from the parents and also recurrent infections from the staphylococcus or the strep throat in the childhood. So usually our blood vessel is looks like this like structurally supported layers. So but these factors affect this blood vessel endothelium and started to proliferate the massive T lymphocytes like CD8 cells. So as we discussed in the genetic predisposition in the first slide, so that ITPKC gene will act here. So this will allow the T cell regulator and started to proliferate more. And also not, not only the T cell and also other cells like IgA plasma cells, eosinophils, and also neutrophils started to proliferate in the endothelium and causing the damage. So massive proliferation will started to stimulate the matrix metalloprotein ESS enzyme. So I want you guys to take note of this particular enzyme because it is functioning in the biological process like physiologically and also pathological process it is important because it will degrade the collagenous substances in the surrounding structure. So this will cause the 
vessel to lose its elastin also collagen substance eventually cause the blood vessel to form the out poaching so in this picture you can see how the normal vessel versus the aneurysm is formed over the time it will cause the damage in the lumen so in the luminal progression it will cause the myofibroblastic proliferation like fibrosis of the blood vessels and also cause the progressive stenosis and it will obstruct the blood flow and ultimately over the time it will cause the clots in the aneurysm and also causes the occlusive thrombus formation myocardial infraction in the patients so let's see the clinical manifestations of kawasaki disease most commonly patients present with the high grade fever unresponsive to any drugs like antipyretics and antibiotics so patients may also have the other principal criteria and it is important for us to diagnose the patient so i want you guys to remember this mnemonic crash so here it is conjunctivitis rashes over the skin and also the cervical adenopathy strawberry tongue and also the hands so let's see the presentations of the each symptom i believe that every person have their own story exactly same like that every cell in our body every tissue in our body has its own physiological process and when it is comes to the disease presentation it have its own pathophysiology so here you can see the bilateral non exudative conjunctivitis in kawasaki disease due to the dilatation of the blood vessels of the eye so when it is comes to the another presentation is rash over the body and it is a polymorphous rash it could be maculopapular or the urticarial or the less psoriatic type or the erythema multiforme so pathophysiology of the rash is due to the vascular endothelium damage and also the circulating toxins and the immunoglobulins reaction for this presentation in the next presentation is cervical adenopathy here you can see the normal cervical lymph nodes and it is due to the increased inflammatory cells within the lymph node so next presentation is strawberry tongue it is usually present with the red oral mucous membranes and also the cracked lips it is due to the perivascular infiltration of the lymphocytes and also mucosal involvement over the fungi form papillae durated edema under the erythema over the hands and feet and this is due to the increased movement of the fluid from the intravascular space to the interstitial space and, and it can swell more than the normal and also the venial endothelial cell destruction which can cause the perineal disc formation the symptoms include irritability rhinorrhea cough abdominal pain diarrhea vomiting and also arthritis and arthralgia of the large joints so when we are diagnosing the patient with the kawasaki disease we should complete this following criteria patient may have the high fever which is not responsive to any drugs and also we should complete the principal criteria at least less than four symptoms or else we should have the fever more than 5 days and plus less than 3 to 4 symptoms from the principal criteria and also the positive 2d echo so prompt suspicion needs to confirm with the 2d echo for the coronary artery involvement and diagnosis and also after the 2 to 3 weeks of onset of the illness so this is due to the coronary artery aneurysms can cause the myocardial infraction without the treatment so that's why we need to confirm with the 2d echo so and also we should ask for the laboratory workups like uh, cbc urinalysis csf and also other synovial fluids so in the cbc panel you will see the anemia and also the leukocytosis thrombocytosis and also the neutrophilia for the urine analysis you will see the sterile pyuria inflammatory markers like erythrocyte sedimentation rate and also the c reactive protein is increased and hyponatremia hypoalbuminemia increased serum transaminase levels in severe cases cerebrospinal fluid shows the pleocytosis and also the synovial fluid shows the leukocytosis rarely mri angiography and the ct scan is used in the right side of the picture you can see the coronary angiography of the giant cell aneurysm and in the left side figure b you can see the other arteries also included like axillary femoral and iliac arteries here in the third picture you can see the left anterior descending coronary artery aneurysm so coming to the treatment ivig is the first line treatment for the kawasaki disease patients it is given the 2 grams per the kg infusion within the 10 days of illness as important as ivig we should also start the patient on aspirin it is given in the two different formulations during the acute phase we will be given as the anti inflammatory high dose of 50 to 100 mg and after subsiding the fever at least 48 hours we should decrease the dose to the anti thrombotic as low as 3 to 5 mg here comes the actual problem when the parents neglect their children disease presentation so the patients may develop the ivig resistant so it, even after giving the first infusion of the ivig patients may not 
subside the fever. So we should give the second IVIG infusion within that 10 days and also we can start on the methylprednisolone or we can start on the cyclophosphamide or the infliximab. So when the disease progression is leads to the thrombus formation, we can start on the fibrinolytic therapy is considered for the severe coronary artery thrombosis. Complications of Kawasaki disease. Usually Kawasaki disease is a self-limiting disease of the 10 to 12 days, but it can be fatal sometimes. It can cause the life-threatening situations like myocarditis, a myocardial infraction of the coronary artery or the pericardial effusion. And also if it is included in the lower extremities, peripheral artery occlusion and Kawasaki shock syndrome and even death. So prognosis is normally it is a 5% of chances with the treatment can reduce the risk of myocardial infractions in the patients. So patients with the Kawasaki disease can develop the atherosclerosis in the future. So follow up should be every 5 years after the onset of disease. So when we are considering the IVIG infusions for, the, for this patient, live vaccines are contraindicated. So now let's go back to our case. Here we have the patient of 9 months old boy who presented with the high grade fever for 4 days and laboratory workup shows increased white blood cells and also sterile pyuria and next day he developed the maclopopular rash and other symptoms also included irritability, vomiting, cough, edema and disc formation over the feet and hands and also the BCG inoculation scar. So this all concludes that even we consider the like three different diagnoses like sepsis, drug reaction, urinary tract infection, patient is still persisted fever even we started on the broad spectrum antibiotics from the last three days. So here we can see the presentation of the Kawasaki disease. Consequently, 2D echo was done and suspected the coronary artery aneurysm and diagnosis of the Kawasaki disease was made. And after he received the intravenous immunoglobin, his fever is diminished straight away. And this case highlights in the unusual manifestation of Kawasaki disease. It is uncommonly in the young age group. So thank you for your patience. I hope you guys understand and follow for more updates and more videos and subscribe to med school nuts